Hello everyone, Chris here, and today I wanted to show you my first impressions about Microsoft Word 2016. Now I have opened the program a few times, though I don't really have that much of a grasp on what's different, but from what I can see, honestly, not all that much is different. I have used Microsoft Office 2013 a heck of a lot, so really when I look at this, I just think, well, basically we're dealing with 2013 here. When you boot up the program, you got your templates over here, which is great. I, I liked Microsoft Word 2013, so I don't want them to change it too much, but what did they change at all, really? So, um, yeah, you got your templates there. Let's just go ahead and open a blank document. And even here, when you actually get to the main interface of 2016, you basically have uh, the same kind of deal here. Your document in the center of the page and uh, all the tabs up on the top. And I think you have the same tabs here. Home was always there with the clipboard, font, paragraph, styles, editing. That is, as far as I can tell, exactly the same as 13. Um, now, they, it is a good system, though. Um, that's one thing you got to understand. Uh, like you want to put a title in for a book, you just click on the uh, title style. So we could put like book style here. And bam, title for the book. Uh, maybe we would want to adjust that style a bit, but it makes it really simple. And then of course using headings can be a great way to get those bookmarks um, in your ebook or just any regular document as well. Um, now, if you don't know what I'm talking about with bookmarks, it's basically little things you can open up, um, or, or links to different sections of your document, rather. That's really what they are. Okay, um, so let's see. Insert tab. Cover pages. I'm not sure cover pages was there. Well, let's actually take a look at that. So let's click here. Ooh, Ooh this is quite nice. All right, um, I think I would have seen this if it was actually there before. It may have been uh, like dumped further into Microsoft Word 2013, but I think this is actually a new feature. So we just insert a new cover page. And this is almost like, you know, an instant, um, not a book cover, but like a title page for your book. Uh, I wonder if they have one for eBooks, actually. Let's take a look here. Like this filigree one. Well, that's not books, but ion light that looks pretty good yeah these are really cool and you can of course get more cover pages from office.com as you can get more templates in general okay so you would of course um you know take what you've got here edit it replace it with your own information this is very much just templates except specifically for cover pages and i do like this idea a lot because like you could kind of manage everything yourself and you know start adding in different graphics uh, split the page into two sections and all that other jazz manually or you can just throw in a cover page instantly and that's actually really helpful because in most cases you don't need to make it look fancy you just need to actually have it um, <laughs> just do its job and the less work you have as the user of Word 2016 the better it's going to be okay so blank pages page breaks uh, that's nothing new um, Normally before I used control and return to do the page break, I think this was there before, though I never really needed to use it. Okay, illustrations, um, if you want to go pull information or rather images from online, uh, I think they still have like a clip art kind of package and uh, all that, that's fine. Being able to add charts, that's standard, it has been for years. Um, now in add-ins, the store for the office store that's actually a little bit different um, I'm not gonna bother with it but uh, I guess Microsoft with Windows as well has been trying to add in a lot more integration with their online stores you know hitting you up with those microtransactions um, not a bad thing I mean it's not like you necessarily have to use it you can if you want to pay a little bit extra it's just the model that a lot of things have been drifting towards um, like video games and mobile applications, you can get them for free or cheap, but in a lot of cases, they'll have some extra features you want. So uh, that's where DLC and microtransactions come in. Now, a link to Wikipedia. That's interesting. Find and quote related information from Wikipedia. Huh. Well, um, that's good and bad, I guess. You know, having that in Microsoft Word is basically going to make 
public school teachers flip out because back when I was, uh, you know, in public school, high school, and even college, a lot of teachers would just kind of flip out on the idea of using Wikipedia. And I think that's an exaggeration of, you know, how dangerous it is to use Wikipedia for information because they do have a community which makes sure that pretty much the information is actually correct over time. So it's generally actually an okay source. Might not be the best, like a you know, um, an actual scientific research report, but often they just link to those reports anyway. Okay, um, so being able to quote information from Wikipedia, that's interesting. Okay, online video. If you want to insert a YouTube video, that is a thing, uh, definitely now. So it looks like they're adding in more um, integration with web stuff. And that's really how everything's just going to drift towards, uh, you know, currently and in the future. Um, every app, even if it's not a internet app, is an internet app because somehow it's just going to link to social media and the internet. So hyperlinks, bookmarks, yeah, that's, th this would be what I was talking about. So you can create bookmarks with the bookmark link. Um, for instance, we want to make a bookmark here. We'll just go ahead and call that number one. I guess it has to be characters. And then we can go to that bookmark. And you can also uh, create links to that bookmark. So, I mean, this is just kind of a side thing, not really uh, 2016 specific. Um, so let's see, we want to create a hyperlink to that bookmark. Let's just go out and do that. And places in this document, bookmarks. Okay, so now when we control click on that, bam, it brings us down there. So that's one of the nice things about Microsoft Word with eBooks. Anyway, enough for anything about that. Uh, Cross-referencing different places on the document, yep. Okay, headers and footers, that's standard. Ooh, Japanese greetings, what the heck? <laughs> okay, that... That's pretty new. Um, let's let's click on that greeting. Hello. Um, I don't know why that's there. Hmm. Okay, maybe it's because I have the Japanese language pack actually installed on my computer. Anyway, interesting. Um, text box. Yep, that's where you just have a box of. Well, let's just demonstrate it. So you draw a box and then you have text in it. It's called a text box. Did you guys? <laughs> Realize how that one works. Okay, quick parts. Insert pre-formatted auto text, document properties, and fields anywhere in the document. Okay, better to just try it. Insert quick parts. Okay, so, you know, add your name, different fields. So this is like an, ext yeah, this is basically just an extension of fields from um, 2013. Except it seems like you got a lot more options here. Pretty neat. Okay, company address, email, fax, phone, keyboards, manager. Yeah, okay. Decent. So it does seem like, um, now that I'm actually looking at all the options, they do got a, li a few new things. Um, not too much that I use all the time. 3D text is nice. Kind of reminds me of Photoshop. Almost like churning your Word document into Photoshop, but... Yes and no on that. <laughs> Obviously, you don't have the same features, but Word Art, I mean, that's been there, but um, looks like they got some new styles there. And keeping these kinds of things up to date, making it look good, that's important. <clears throat> you don't want super outdated fonts. Okay, objects, embedded objects, okay, like an Excel chart, date and time, signatures. All right. And uh, e equations, if you want mathematical stuff, symbols. Yeah, that lets you just put in any symbol. Um, and that can include a lot of different symbols. Basically, anything you can imagine on a computer is a symbol somewhere in Unicode. Okay, numbers. Really, would I need that? Ooh, hmm. Different kinds of numbering systems. All right, yep. <laughs> There's my Asian language packs, apparently. Okay, let's check the other tabs out. Design tab looks pretty much exactly how it did before. Possibly they uh, changed the fonts, though. Okay, where's the default? This is default. Or this is default. Elegant. Okay, and well, it's still using Calibri. 
that's what it was in 2013, if I recall. Okay, colors. That's interesting. What if I change that? Oh, wow. That's pretty neat. So you might be able to just use this to change the entire color scheme of your document really quickly. With just the click of a button. That's actually neat. I don't recall that. Okay, fonts. Okay, so font family sets for your entire document. That's really cool. Quick way to change everything and actually have it look, um, you know, relatable to each other. Your headers combined with your body paragraphs. That's nice. That's really nice. Okay, watermarks if you needed that. Backgrounds, borders. Yep. Okay, layout, text direction. If you want it vertical or horizontal. Some languages actually write top down. Okay, margins. Well, yep, yeah, that's just <laughs> really standard. That's been there since the dawn of time. Document sizes, columns, um, like if you want half your text on the left, half your text on the right, and you want it divided, that's for that. Okay, breaks, line numbers, hyper, uh, hyph hyphenation. Uh, I'm not actually sure what that is. Um, <clears throat> references, table of contents, yep. Um, now, what I would want to know, and this would be a big thing, um, since I do have actually a few ebooks out there. In 2013, if you do the automated table of contents, it's not really compatible with certain ebook systems like Smashwords. Because Smashwords turns it into a bunch of different formats, and if you try to use the default uh, table of contents in Word 2013, it actually messes with. Um, the auto translation into the ebook formats from a docx. So I wonder if they actually fixed that for uh, 2016. <clears throat> or maybe that's just something that Smashwords itself has to fix. Who knows? Something that requires some testing. Okay, citations. Oh, interesting. That'll be good for, um, you know, students and that kind of thing. How exactly does that work? Do you just kind of type in the information? and then it gives you a properly formatted citation. Okay, yeah. Now let's just let's just try typing some stuff in here. Okay, now author Chris, why not tutorials year 2015 Las Vegas publisher me. <laughs> okay. So Chris 2015. Um I see is it going to add like a bibliography? So that would be like the in-text citation. Is that, I guess that's what we're going for here. Ooh. Oh. Oh, wow. That's really cool. Okay. <clears throat> so for those of you who don't know about writing reports and APA and MLA and that kind of thing. Oh, yeah, I see. You have the style right here. Oh, wow. You can change the style on everything in the document just like that. That is neat. Okay, so for those of you who don't know about MLA, APA, citation, all the stuff you have to do in college, um, when, you, when you quote something or you basically paraphrase something, you got to add at the end of the sentence, uh, the, well, specifically for APA, this little um, note in parentheses. What text are you referencing? In this case, it's uh, the author name comma, the year it was published, or the year of the work it was published. And that's enough information, generally speaking, um, so that you know which source to look at in the bibliography. And being able to add it just by going, bam, insert citation. Oh, yeah, I want another site. Oh, wow. So you can actually include multiple sources if you needed to. I don't think I ever had to do that. But, yeah, that's really cool. Just insert the citation instantly. Nice. That... This version of Microsoft Word seems really useful for students, actually. Um, I don't know if you can get away with Wikipedia in uh, schools at the moment. Um, maybe for some stuff, and uh, maybe for some non-school stuff, but being able to do citations easily, um, Wikipedia. I used to have to use, like, uh, online bibliography creators, because there were sites like that, like easybib.org or .com or something like that. Okay, and mailings. Um, never really had to play around with this one too much. Sending mail, you'll need an envelope. Well, let's click it. Okay, envelopes, labels. 
right? Okay, so if you were going to print this out and stick it in a envelope, I guess this has some stuff there to help you out with that. But um, envelopes and labels were actually there in uh, 2013 as well. I think 2010, probably 20, uh, 2007 as well. Um, I remember, you know, working on the help desk, I actually had to help some people figure out the label stuff. So, yeah, it was there. Okay, mail merge. Create one document and send it to multiple people. Yep, select recipients. Okay, insert fields, uh, yeah, address blocks, etc. Uh, good corporate stuff, <coughs> I would imagine. Okay, review. Spell check grammar thesaurus. Hmm, was that always a thesaurus in Microsoft Word? Hmm, I guess it might be an online thesaurus or something. I don't think it always had a thesaurus, so that might be new. Insights. Okay, what's this? Learn more about text you select by seeing definitions, images, and other results from various online sources. Okay. So basically it's doing Google search. Or, well, <coughs> Bing search. This is Microsoft we're dealing with. Of course it's Bing. Okay. Translate into different languages. Japanese consistency checker. All right. Um... Comments. Okay, so comments. If you want to add notes to a document so that other people can see it without actually editing the document itself, that's what that's about. And you can hide and show them. Um, tracking changes. Okay, looks like they got a few new options there. Um, really good if you want to like make sure that documents don't get messed around with too much. You can always backtrack. And also there were some features where you could... Um, make it so that you could sign a document or only people could edit it if they had a password. So basically versioning control for documents. Okay, yeah, and as I was talking about, accepting and rejecting changes. Um, sometimes only certain people have the ability to do, th uh, to do that. By restricting editing specifically. Man, it's like everything I just mentioned. It's the next thing on the list. Okay, so they got pretty good ordering there. Start inking. Okay, so... If you want to draw on the document, you can do that. And uh, the fact that it has an ink pen, I wonder if it actually works. You know what? I'm going to see if this actually works with a pressure-sensitive tablet, because I happen to have one right here. It does. Pretty impressive. <laughs> Microsoft Word may, in fact, be Photoshop. Okay, neat. Okay, let's go back over here, though. Um, view. We'll just take a quick look here, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, looks almost exactly the same as before. All right. So they got some new internet features. Um, I believe that stuff with the pin is new. Uh, giving you some options for, like, basically simplifying documents. Uh, specifically, the design tab, I think it was. Yeah, like colors and font sets. I think fonts was there. I don't remember if colors was there, but um, I may have overlooked it. But the fact that that's there is really nice. And references, inserting citations, that's really cool. So all in all, I think actually, you know, when I first looked at it, I thought Microsoft 2016 really didn't have much new to it. And it's not a total revolution, but that's fine because Microsoft Word 2013 was good. So they're just taking what was already good and adding a few minor additions to it. And I think it's going to be really good for students, specifically, um, with the bibliography stuff, um, the source, that's really nice, and uh, Wikipedia. Now, of course, that doesn't mean every teacher is going to accept Wikipedia sources, but it's a good first place to look things up. And uh, they also have that, what was that other one? The... Was it review smart lookup? So you can basically bam search online without even opening up a web browser. So all in all, um, Microsoft Word 2016 is actually pretty cool, and I'm sure as I use it, um, you know, going forward the next few years, because it'll probably be a few years until 2019 Microsoft Word comes out, Microsoft Office as a whole, and um, yeah, I'm sure there'll be some cool new features that I I missed here, but will kind of impress me as it comes along. So Microsoft Word 2016, there you go, guys. Um, pretty cool software.